Hi, everybody. It's Rachel Evers here uh, to talk by myself to you about home inspections. So this is supposed to be the Rachel and Cassandra show. Um, and Cassandra has ghosted me today. I hope that she's okay because it's really, I don't know that she's ever not responded. So um, hopefully she's okay. Also, we're having some weird technical issues. The weather is gross right now. So all of my tech is really slow and laggy. Uh, so bear with me, sorry for the long intro in the beginning of blank screen. Um, anyway, I do have something to share with you. I don't know if I'll be able to talk for 40 minutes by myself about home inspections, but um, I do have some things that I wanna share with you. So if anybody wants to join me and have this call live on Facebook with me, that would be amazing. I'm inviting you. Uh, the Zoom ID is 221-168-7580 and there is no waiting room. Uh, and before I get too far along, I do wanna make sure and point out to everybody that I am not an attorney. So even though sometimes I talk about this, like legal advice, they're not. I am also not a financial advisor. So though I deal in big money and other people's money, I can't give you advice when it comes to how to use your money or, or what to do with it. So I'm not an attorney, I'm not a financial advisor. I am a professional realtor uh, doing business in Southeast Michigan. So that's the other thing. A lot of what I talk about, uh, you can, hmm, it conveys in other markets in other parts of the country, but there are things that are customary in other parts of the country that I don't talk about because I don't do business there. So I don't know the norms and customs. Um, and actually, since we're talking about home inspections today, that's a good example. I have a, I had a conversation yesterday with a buyer about a house in Florida and they have to think about things like sinkholes and moldy drywall. Those are things we don't really deal with in Michigan. We're more of a basements and radon kind of market. So um, just keep in mind, if you're buying a house or selling a house in another part of the country, obviously take anything I say with the understanding that it's relevant to Southeast Michigan. So, um, to keep this short and sweet, I guess, the important thing to know when you're doing a home inspection is that in Michigan, and this is what I tell all of my buyers, in Michigan, there is no licensing or sanctioning body around home inspections. So if you're buying a house, it's very likely there's a clause in there that says that the purchaser has the right to conduct a home inspection and um, it has to be satisfactory. So what does that mean? I, I'm like, let me start over. Your contract is very likely to give you the opportunity to do a home inspection. And that is purely subjective. So as a home buyer, you can hire whoever you want to do your home inspection. You can bring your neighbor. It can be your dad. You don't have to hire a guy. Um, also though, if you do hire a guy, just know that in order to be a home inspector in the state of Michigan, you literally need a business card. I tell people that my daughter, who is a 20 year old kid, uh, could print I'm a home inspector business cards and be legal in the state of Michigan. So it is a buyer beware state. And I mentioned that I'm going to tell you a story. So here's the story. I have a buyer client who bought a house um, I feel like it was four or five years ago. I'd have to look. Uh, she and I have since become friends. So I've gotten to hear about all of the horrible things that have gone wrong with this house that they bought four or five years ago. They did do a home inspection. Um, and the home inspector did not uncover the fact that there were squirrels living in the walls of the home and that there were multiple, multiple entry points uh, for the squirrels. So my poor client has spent years trying to eliminate the squirrels that were living in her walls. And as time has passed, she has found other things like water damage that was hidden with multiple coats of thick paint. 
um, dog pee up the walls in one of the bedrooms that was hidden by new carpet that was installed. So basically my client went and found a house, fell in love with it. It looked good, it felt good, it was priced. I mean, the market has been hot, so they did pay top dollar for this house. Um, and there were a lot of hidden defects. And, you know, if you're wired like me, you're thinking, okay, who do, who do we sue? Not that I'm a litigious person, but there's obvious and flagrant evidence of fraud and misrepresentation. So back to the topic at hand, the inspector, I don't want to say it was a shitty inspector, but boy, the breadth and depth of the problems that have happened with my client, with this house, I do feel like where the hell was the inspector on this shit? And, you know, and part of me wants to go pull up that inspection and go through it with a fine tooth comb and be like, you know, did the inspector just do, did they, did they dial it in? Did they not know what they were looking at? Because like any fool can buy home inspector software, plug in some information and make you a really pretty report with pictures. Um, and I say pretty report because it looks professional, but there's so many tools. You can just go buy a tool to put in the information. You really want somebody who understands what they're looking at. And I feel like I've said this before, but this is what I tell my buyers. Having your home inspected is very much like buying a used car off of Marketplace or Craigslist and taking it to your trusted inspector, your trusted mechanic to go through with a fine tooth comb to f figure out if it's a lemon. Obviously nobody has a crystal ball. Somebody's gonna buy the damn lemon. Let's just do our best to make sure it's not you. Um, and I don't say that to scare you out of buying a house, like new houses, used houses, it doesn't matter. Your inspector, I promise, no matter what you're buying, is going to give you a 37 page report of all the scary shit that's wrong with your house. And your job as a buyer is to determine if that report reflects the condition you'd expect for a house in this area, whatever area you're in, in that price range of that style and age. So boy, I'm just rambling here, but one of the big pitfalls I see buyers fall into is doing a home inspection and then taking this report. And like I said, I promise you it will be terrifying and it will be multiple pages and it will be potentially overwhelming. Um, but your job at that point is to decide if it matches kind of what you'd expect, not to take the report and send over a giant honey-do list of the 37 pages of stupid bullshit, right? Like nail pops and Maybe there's, there's always a switch in every house that doesn't do anything, right? Like shit like that in this market, you're probably not going to want to ask to be fixed. And, you know, obviously your agent's going to back your play. You can do what you want. But if you're walking away from houses over the little shit, you're probably not going to find a house and a new house is going to have a list of the same kind of little shit. So next thing. Um, what do you do with that report? This is kind of an important one because I've had buyers and shame on me for not managing to this when it happened with my client, right? Um, the only person who needs to see your inspection report is you. It's yours. It's your private property. You bought it. You paid for it. So please don't send it to your loan officer. In fact, your loan officer does not want to see it. Like they actively don't want to see your report. Don't send it to your insurance company either. They don't want to see it. It's like, uh, hmm. it is designed to be all the things that are wrong with the house. So unless you can balance that with all the things that are right with the house, you're painting a picture that could end up hurting you in the long run. Um, and your inspection is also, and I feel like I said this before, but your inspection is completely subjective. So let's do a hypothetical. Let's say you write a killer offer on a house because I'm your agent and I helped you win it. You locked it down and you're doing your inspection. You bring in your guy, 
he does this 37 page scary report and you look at it as the buyer and you're like, yeah, you know, this is kind of what I expected. It's a 25 year old home. You can tell the windows are original. We were in the basement. We saw that the furnace is original. The water heater had a little rust around it. Like the condition reflected in the report matches what you saw and what you're paying for. Um, but let's say that that inspection uncovered that there is you're on a well and there's bacteria in the water because you did a water test like a good home buyer. It's, you know, it's not unreasonable to go to the seller and say, hey, can you, oh, look who's joining us. There she is. I'll be damned. I'm still finishing my thought. It's not unreasonable to go to the seller and say, hey, can you um, treat the well and get the water to a drinkable standard? Um, but you're never going to expect that they're going to do it. I can't just keep ignoring that she's here. Everybody, is that Cassandra Evers? <laughs> me, I Cassandra? fell asleep. I'm so sorry. I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, holy. I'm jealous. <laughs> well, now my slide okay. is all up. We're talking about inspections because I have had so many inspection fuckeries lately. Oh, I'm sorry. I know you have some trusted people that you recommend. So I'm, are people just picking like people out of the phone book or using their, their dad or their uncle, oh, well, which is another favorite? Well, okay. So, you know, part of my job is to make sure people understand their rights and you do not have to hire somebody. So I started the talk with um, you know, it really is buyer beware and any fool can print home inspector business cards in this state and be legal. So you want to make sure that it's somebody you know is doing a good job, like, which is tough because how often do you hire a home inspector, you know? Five times ever. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, I was reiterating the what you do with that report and who doesn't need to see it. Like, don't I send saw it to that. your officer, don't send it to I was your, like, don't send it. <laughs> um, I would even go so far as to, I, do, I don't look at them. People send them to me. Sometimes I have to handle them and it's weak, but I'm sure in court, if I had, if someone, oh my God, I'm doing this all out of order. If you send me your home inspection report, I then become potentially liable for the contents. I don't want to fucking see it either because one guy's opinion may say that there's mold in the attic. And if that language is on the report and then another report may say it's a black substance. Yeah, like it just becomes a huge liability issue. And because it's subjective, I don't give a F what's in the report. I can't guide you on which things are important, which things to think are important which things you should freak out about. It's totally up to you what you want to freak out about. My job is to back your play and get you what you want. It's, it's a dicey position to be in. Yes, I've, I've heard of, you know, the honey-do list where the, the person literally takes the report and asks for 40 things to be fixed. And like, okay, it's a used house. Um, and then I've also heard you know, people are like, yep, it's fine. I, you know, I'll ask for this one thing or could they give me 500 bucks to fix this thing that I wasn't expecting to have to fix. So. Yeah. And, and you're asking for, I mean, your options after a home inspection, generally speaking, obviously defer to your own contract because your contract trumps anything I say you have the right to. But generally speaking, the contract is going to give you the option as the buyer to do your inspection and then either walk away, renegotiate for repairs or money, or proceed as already outlined in the contract. Yeah. Context of the market is going to determine how you handle any results of an inspection. And if you, what do I want to say? Um, if you're the buyer, you actually have, you can't get fired, basically. What do I want to say? So you do your inspection, you find a bunch of shit, you ask for $5,000. The seller can say, no, suck it. I'm not doing anything. But what they can't say is, I'm not doing anything. You can't buy my house anymore. So right. 
if there's something you really care about, always ask. Don't be an asshole, an asshole. Um, but I'm bummed. Just know that the seller has the right to say no. And you as the buyer can say, oh, okay, fine. I'll still take it. Like we already hammered out and agreed to terms. You can still move forward without modifying the contract. Sure. It doesn't hurt to ask for reasonable things. And I've also seen contracts where yeah. people would like a home inspection, but it is written that they agreed not to ask for any changes to the purchase agreement after the home inspection or repairs. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You're frozen. Oh, sorry. You're not frozen for me. But... Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to repeat what I think you said, which is people can out front say, I want to do an inspection, but I promise I'm not going to ask for anything, which is a, uh, it's a smart strategy because you're letting the seller know up front that you're not going to be a nickel and dimey, like death by a thousand cuts after the inspection. And that, that is the scariest part for a seller of any contract process. Well, yeah, they've just, so, so uh, saying that gives them the peace of mind that you're not going to, uh-huh. So Kim, and I'm sorry, Cassandra, you're, you're a little frozen still. So Kim is asking, are inspections of much value? So many things to get overlooked. Inspectors usually have a clause. They are not responsible for things they miss. So Kim, you're absolutely right. Just like everybody involved in the transaction has a, I'm not liable. It's literally, literally like a, you can't sue me document. I can't be held accountable for the work I'm doing. I have one. My brokerage has one. The inspector has one. Um, the title company has one, the lender has one. Nobody's claiming responsibility for the condition of the property. So are inspections of much value? I'm going to say yes, because if you're spending a quarter of a million dollars up to a half a million dollars or more, you're really mitigating the odds that you're going to buy something with a hidden defect. And nine times out of 10, the way the inspection goes down is the inspector does the inspection, the buyer goes, oh, let me give you an example. I have a buyer buying a house right now. The inspector found carpenter bees boring into the side of the house. The seller had no idea, right? Like, and that's normally how it goes. It was not a big catastrophic deal breaker level issue, but it certainly the buyer wanted it addressed. And so did the seller. So I was gonna say, an yeah. inspection done right can benefit everybody. Even if my buyer had not proceeded with that purchase, the seller was like, oh, thanks for letting us know. And they had it remediated. Well, you spoke um, about I had another inspection. Yeah. You spoke uh, about two weeks ago, I feel like, about a seller mm -hmm. getting a home inspection, right? Yes. About sellers getting yes. a home inspection and prior prior to listing it to yes. help mitigate some prior of to listing this stuff go ahead yes to help it's not a terrible idea no that's it's in this market it's a good idea especially if you want to minimize the risk of being blindsided by something major i have another seller who had a hole in their roof and a critter living in their roof and they had no idea they, they just didn't know. So the buyer was terrified, even though the seller was like, I'll fix it. Well, let's talk about replacing the roof. The buyer being a first time home buyer who's young and like has no context for normal homeowner shit was like, sorry, I'm out of here. Now, had my seller, had I advised them to get an inspection, they probably would have done it. So shame on me. But had my seller had someone else go through the house to see, find the things that they didn't even know to look for, they could have fixed that and then gone on the market. Yeah. I'd like to think I would know no what I need to fix in my house. All the... but... right. I'm, you say that again? I was going to say, I, I've lived in my house almost 10 years, and while I'd like to think I know 
what would need to be fixed if we would sell. That doesn't mean I would know about bees boring in. You know, there's some stuff you just don't see or know. Yeah. Nobody puts their head in their attic. People don't go in their attic unless they store good stuff up there. I did two years you know. ago, but we had a tree come through it. So that's it. Right. And and Never. There, so truth be told, you could have some kind of mold living in your attic and you would have no idea. True. Uh, you know, and building norms change over time too. One of the most common things I see called out on a home inspection and and to Kim's point, every inspection now didn't used to be. So all the time, home inspectors say that the bathroom vent, the bathroom fan is venting into the attic. And the recommendation is to extend that venting so it goes outside. And people get really like, oh my God, it's venting into the attic. Well, that's just how they used to do it. Like it just, it used to be fucking normal and appropriate and acceptable. Now it's not. I have one that vents into so, the attic. <laughs> it's super common. Our yeah. basement bathroom was venting into the furnace room. So go in anywhere except for right next door. We didn't know. <laughs> but it was out of the little room, just into the other room. <laughs> Into the other room, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but our furnace room was so humid and smelled so <laughs> nice. We couldn't figure out why. Shampoo in here all the time. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So you just don't know. And the houses are houses are just fucking weird. They weird are. Weird and quirky. Um, um, so, again, back to the buyer beware. So... Let's flesh this all the way out. I'm going to go back to the story about my friend who bought this fucking turd of a house. She's been doing digging for years and she has pieced together this version of events that goes like this. Someone bought the house for really cheap, did it as a flip and sold it to a couple. That couple moved in, found out very quickly that it was a dirty flip, not reputable, thick paint and you know they spit shined it and made a fucking killing so these new owners were like oh holy fuck this house is a money pit so they put it on the market and sold it to my buyer and the chain of title did you and get the they name are of poor as fuck living in a trailer in northern michigan yeah all parties have been identified but legal persecution is I don't want to say next to impossible but my client if my client sues the seller there's nothing for them to get because the seller is broke it would be very expensive for my client to pursue going to court and having the sale reversed and how do you unring that bell with the mortgage company and all the players right it's a web but I changed my mind. I don't want the money. Yeah. And here we, and we are, we're years later because it took time for all of these issues to be uncovered. And after you find the, this issue, this issue, then you turn around and it's been 18 months and you're like, well, it took this long to uncover the depth and breadth of the problems, but how do we go back and unring a bell from 18 months ago? And then my client, where do they live? Like it's fucking sticky. So legal recourse is you really have to be committed and it's expensive and you still might lose. So let's go back to the beginning. Do your due diligence as best you can on the front end. And I'm not trying to scare you out of buying houses. 99.9% .9 of the time, it goes just fine. But there is never 100%. So try just try not to be... Well, there's always there's always that asshole that fills out the seller's disclosure and just lies, right? Or says, "My favorite is um, never lived in home." Oh, uh, like if you're an investor favorite. or your kid lived there or you rented, yeah. 
That was, uh, why is that a legal response? Who gives a fuck if you lived in the house? You own it. You've obviously physically probably been in the home. You would know if there were some issues, but they just cross a line so, through the whole form and they're like, there, eh. Because there are some um, circumstances that do not require a seller disclosure. And I'll give you an easy one in a state. So let's say that Mark's dad dies. His dad and his wife die in a plane crash. I why don't no you just idea. do our parents? Why, why, why are you bringing Mark's parents, dad, Mark's dad into because this? Because our parents, because then, because if I do our parents, I then have to explain, like you used to own the house that our parents live in. So the disclosure, if you're handling the sale, gets a little sticky. Act like you're nice handling the sale. The house, so Ryan is. Some of the things. But it doesn't matter. Everybody's been in the house and heard them talk about crap with the house. Yeah. But that, but isn't that just hearsay? What if mom and dad were just, what if mom was freaking out about this terrible window because really she just wanted it moved over four inches? First hand. It's first hand knowledge. Okay. That's a reference to a joke, by the way, because my our mom. I used to have this joke that our mom is the only person I know who can look at a window and be like, Bill, will you move that over four inches? Because my dad can literally do everything. But I realized yeah. like in the last six months, I also have that because Mark can do everything too. So he moves yeah. windows four inches for I want. Yeah, that's a nice slider you have there that didn't yeah. used to be like that, right? I know. I know. Oh, the built-in shelves behind me? Yeah. yeah. I built those. And so yeah. with Ricky, if Ricky is watching, he does good work. Anyway, back to the home inspection. Oh, no, back to the disclosure. So there are guidelines about who has to disclose what. So let's use our parents. Mom and dad are selling the house or they both fucking die and we have to sell the house or we decide to sell the house and Ryan is the executor. I Ryan's our brother, by the That's way. Our brother. I'm confusing this. Yeah, I'm. I'm overcomplicating this. Let's say you're doing it. Cassandra used to own the house. So does Cassandra have? Is she required to disclose some things? I think the answer is probably not. Well. Yeah, but that's if I'm an asshole, I guess legally I would draw the line through and be like, I don't know anything. But like as a human, I've been in the house. I know what the issues were. I've seen them. I've watched my mom walk me around and show me the things that they have done. And I've heard all the stories about what was replumbed and all of that was, I mean, I lived there for 10 years ago. Yep. But when you come to a question, so... <gasps> If you come to a question that says, has there been evidence of water in the basement? It's just a yes or no question. So you answer the question. I have an idea. You don't know that mom and dad understood, but let me finish my scenario. But what if you don't know that mom and dad had the basement waterproofed? So you can say that the basement flooded because that happened when you were there, but you don't know the rest of the story. Like Paul Harvey says, you got now the rest of the now you know the rest, the rest of the story. story what's yeah well it's similar to title work where there's the chain of ownership going clear but like why don't sellers disclosures stick with the house like as part of a house and that way you could see them from all so, of the chain of ownership doesn't matter people lie in them anyway so i do but here, no, but okay, so you are actually tapping into a topic I want to discuss, and I don't even, it's such a big topic. I think that could come with blockchain technology, but, right? Yeah, like Everybody's a car like fact. Feeding information into. Yes. Yep. Well, okay, so that's like a clue report. Just like a car fax, the clue report on a house is dependent on an insurance claim being made. Yes. So it's some, it's some stuff, but it's not all the stuff. Yeah. So why it would be amazing if we do get to that point. Yeah. Oh, I think it's totally coming with title, with chain of title, uh, with mm -hmm. insurance activity. 
uh, and seller disclosures. So yeah, wouldn't it be cool if you're buying a house from 1900s? Because the way that it works now, if I buy a house today and sell it next year, I'm liable for disclosing what I know about the house for the time that I lived there. I don't, I don't have to tell you, even if the prior owner told me that half of it burned down. What if I forgot? What if I forget that shit? People forget things too. It's not always malicious misrepresentation. Sometimes what if you buy it as an investment property and then just say, I never lived in it. And that happens. I know. It would and be so awesome. Just if, like anything. That's great. It would be awesome if what? If that you think technology is going that direction. That's, I mean, oh, I think I that's totally cool. Do. Yeah, that's cool. Yes. Yeah, well, one of the cool side effects I think that will come with that is people's expectations will be normalized because every house you look at is going to have this long list of the information of all the shit that ha and shit happens in houses. So the buyer expectation of a perfect home that's never had an issue will be mitigated by all of these reports with all of this stuff. I don't know. Anyway, do you want to see a home inspection report as a lender? No, never, never, never. Why? never. Why not? because it shows me everything that's wrong with the house. And as a loan officer, I don't really, it doesn't bother me, but I cannot keep things from an underwriter who is, whose job is to determine whether or not everything meets the criteria needed to loan, you know, 95% of the value of the house. So if there's something major on there that doesn't seem to bother you, that doesn't mean the lender would be okay with it. So. We generally do not want to see it. We need the appraisal report. The appraisal shows out yes, thank you. the huge deficiencies, the things that do not meet fed, like lending requirements. I don't care about all the little things. I care what the appraiser says and what the appraiser sees because he shows me the really bad things, right, that just is not okay and then just tells me the value. That's what I want to see. I don't need the minutia. I don't need to know how it's built. Yep. Yep. And if the yeah. appraiser goes out there and sees that there's, oh, you know, a tarp on the roof and water dripping into a bucket in the living room, that's going to get called out because that's a defect. Like it, yeah. the house is not functional, even though yeah. you could live there, you can't live there. Yeah. The right? appraiser is concerned with the three S's safe, sound and secure, right? That's, that's the three S's that they're concerned with. That's all. Okay. Yep. And like major things like the house has to have a furnace. Yeah. Right. It can't have running water fire pit in the middle, like a tea. running water. Yeah. A roof. Can we talk about flooring? Sure. What do you want to talk about? If yeah. it's required? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's this weird um, requirement for flooring. So if I'm buying a house with a mortgage and the carpet's been pulled, I pulled the carpet out of Anna's bedroom and painted the subfloor and it looks amazing. But I think an appraiser, if they wanted to, could bust my chops on that if I was selling my house. Um, a conventional appraiser probably would not if you were using a conventional loan, but rural development, VA and SHA would all say put flooring down. It's weird. I've seen a concrete floor, like um, similar to how they do, like painted concrete, like they would down south, right? Because they have slab floors, and you don't have to put right. tile down. Didn't Janine do that? I think that happened to cousin Janine. She had to put Maybe flooring on it. top of her. Concrete. Yeah, even though that was a, because it was viewed as a subfloor, and it's weird because appraisers are human and you will not get the same answer from all of them depending on what the topic is. You'd like to think so in a perfect world, but it's just not how it works. So why is the requirement for flooring 
like why would I have to put carpet over like I can put wood floor down but the subfloor doesn't count as a wood floor yeah I don't know I don't make the rules you can, I get you the HUD handbook it's mm -hmm. you know a ridiculous amount of pages long you're asking me to dis explain you know constitutional construction some subcommittee uh, <laughs> you know yeah it should just be like floor, uh, you know, yep. not joists, something that will hold your physical body, I guess, but I don't know. Um, yeah, no, that's a good, sorry, I, you can see I was like looking at my screen. Yeah. Yeah, oh. that's your reference to some subcommittee explains so much about real estate. Yeah. Somebody 50 years ago decided it was required and it hasn't been updated because it seems reasonable still. Um, before we run out of time, and I know I joined late, so I don't really get to um, have a topic. I was sleeping. I'm really sorry. We had talked on the phone briefly, so I wanted to mention about earnest money deposit and money orders. Yes. So yes. you said, you said, it's totally fine taking a money order. And we were just chatting and I, I said, used to. never. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And I said, no, don't take those. And you're like, why? My, you know, my, my broker will take it. They said that's one of the allowed types. I can't take cash, but I could take a, what is it? Certified check, a personal check, or a money order. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so I would advise you just take a personal check or a cashier's check. The money order yep. almost is always generated from cash, which is not a real thing in society. I know there's the rumor that everybody's, you know, we're getting rid of cash and we're out of change, but cash is almost is impossible to track. You can't go to your safe and get out cash and turn it into a check and use it to buy a house. Cash is nothing, and you can thank 9-11 for that. That is absolutely a huge red flag. Giant cash deposits are a huge red flag, and it translates to earnest money deposit. More often than not, I cannot follow cash that was turned into a money order. It's impossible. Yep. And then I'm going to ask you to back it out of the transaction, which is just more paperwork. So I'd strongly advise every realtor – Yep. to not accept that money order. And I strongly urged buyers to not use cash, go to your bank and ask them to take money out to get a cashier's check if you don't have a checkbook or wire the money to the title company. I just had a guy do that. He's 27 maybe. And he's like, you know, I'll just go get cash out of the ATM. And I'm like, nope. No, you won't. You gotta go. No, you won't. You'll wire it. I I need a paper trail. Yeah. We paper trail all money. It would. This would be a good topic to let's bring. Let's do this next week uh, because I think it bears repeating at the beginning of an episode to make sure that people hear it. And I would like to talk about. And I don't know how much. I don't understand why you can't do an electronic funds transfer that is not a wire for to for an earnest deposit or even to closing um like why can't i do an ach why can't i just do an online bill pay like move that three thousand dollars earnest money to the title company that way i don't know i i feel like a title company rep would best be able to answer that i think it Every wire has a federal funds money, um, a federal reference number. number. And so it's tracked yes. by the Fed. And it's, um, I feel like it's probably because it's legitimized in that way versus, you know, swiping your card. Although I do know a mortgage, or not a mortgage brokerage, a real estate brokerage that and will. I can write a check. Take well, card. just so you know, it's not just you write a check. Do I ask you for a picture of the check? Yes. And then when it clears the borrower's account, yes. I have a bank statement showing it, that check number and I have a copy of the check cleared their account. And sometimes I get a copy of the canceled checks uh, back too. So it's still paper trailed. It's not like, 
No, I know. But wouldn't an ACH also be paper trailed? I don't know. There's no image of it. So I, it's it's no good without the image, right? Like I, a, a paper check, I can see it was written out to, you know, Keller Williams, right? Or tribe title or whoever you're using for the escrow account. It's a physical thing and it's written on front. You can't just wire it to tribe like, and me see it come out of your bank account. Like there's, it's different. It's different because I can, they need to see the image okay. of it. But, but good question. I know a title company will not request the ACE or accept an ACH. It must be a wire. And I always nope. assumed it was Correct. because of the federal reference number that follows all wires. Yeah. And the 30 or $40 fee to do it. Another, yep. another dumb conversation. Let's talk about those too. Let's talk about compliance fees next week and wires. Oh, God. You want to talk about, so I do have a part where I write in my system when I'm doing upfront numbers that nobody can see and I write bullshit fees. I know. I'm just saying. Yep. Yep. We're priming the pump. Yep. It is. It's bullshit fees. And I have a lot to say about those. Well, I'm glad that you were able to make it because it very much felt like I was giving a lecture and it's way Sorry. better when I have an interaction. Call me next time if I don't reply to a text. Just you know what's call funny? Me. I, dude, I almost called you and I was like, nope, she like I I stopped short of calling you because I figured I you must have been tied up with something. So I apologize for not calling you. The weather is shit and our connection is shit. So hopefully this will okay. all be better next week. Okay. You're frozen. You look amazing though, frozen the way you are. Bye everybody. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, do these. Bye. Bye.